here we have a division where we are dividing a decimal number by an integer, a whole number. Now how do we do these divisions? All we need to do, we need to write this division in the long division form, sometimes referred to as the bus stop method. So let's write this down. 62.02, the dividend, the thing that I am dividing, goes inside of the bus stop. And the quantity that I am dividing by, the divisor, goes outside of the bus stop. Now the first thing that we do, we ask ourselves, how many 7s go into 6? Well clearly there are no 7s in 6, so we, I write 0 here. And then what I do, I ask myself, how many 7s go into 62? Well clearly in 62 there are 8 lots of 7. And 7 times 8 is 56. So the remainder here, 62 minus 56, is 6. Now what I do, I need to bring this 0 down here. And immediately what I need to do, I need to place this decimal point here. And then we ask ourselves, how many 7s go into 60? Well, clearly in 60, there are 8 lots of 7. And the remainder is... 7 times 8 is 56. So the remainder is 4. And then what we do, we bring this 2 down. And then we ask ourselves... How many 7s go into 42? Well, clearly in 42, there are exactly 6 lots of 7s. And there aren't any remainders because 7 times 6 is 42. 42 take away 42 is 0. There aren't any remainders and we stop here. So the answer to this question, 62.02 divided by 7, is 8.86. Now, if you are ever confused about where to place the decimal point in your answer, all you need to do, do an estimate to the division. Now, we are dividing by 7, so think of a multiple of 7 close to 62. Well, clearly, the closest multiple of 7 next to 62 is 63. So we do an estimate. If we do 63 divided by 7, the answer is clearly 9. So this tells us that the answer to this question has to be in the units. It cannot be in the hundreds, meaning the answer cannot be 886. The answer cannot be in the tens, it cannot be 88.6. It has to be in the units. It has to be 8.86, close to 9. So here we have another division where we are dividing a decimal by an integer. Now, you may notice that the dividend, the thing that we are dividing, is smaller than the divisor, the thing that we are dividing by. Now, don't let this confuse you. All you need to do once again is write this division in the bus stop form. So in the bus stop form, the 3.36, the dividend, goes inside of the bus stop and the divisor 8 goes outside of the bus stop. And the first thing we do, we ask ourselves, how many 8s go into 3? Well, clearly in 3, there are no 8s. So I write 0 here. And then we need to immediately place the decimal point here. And then what we do, we ask ourselves, how many 8s go into 33? Well, clearly in 33, there are 4 lots of 8s that go into 33. Because 8 times 4 
is 32. And what's the remainder here? Well, 33 minus 32 is just 1. And now what I do, I bring this 6 down. And then we ask ourselves, how many 8s go into 16? Well, clearly in 16, there are exactly 2 lots of 8. Because 8 times 2 is 16. And, so, and then so there are no remainders. So we stop here. So my answer to this question is 0 0.42. You may have noticed that in the divisions that we just did, it is only the dividend that was a decimal. The divisors were integers, whole numbers. Now, for the SATs exams, you only need to know decimal divisions where the dividend is a decimal and the divisor will always be an integer, a whole number. Now, what if we had... A question where both the dividend and the divisor were decimals. So for example, suppose we had, say for example, 8.65 divided by 2.5. Now, how would we do this Division. Now, you do not need to know this for your SATs, but just to extend your knowledge, you may want to learn how to do this. So let's do this. Now, once again, all you need to do, you need to write this in the long division form, the bus stop form. So let's write this. One, once again, the Dividend goes inside of the bus stop, 8.65, and the divisor, 2.5, goes outside of the bus stop. Now, all you have to do here, treat this as an integer, meaning treat this as a whole number. Just ignore the decimal, and just ignore the decimal there. And the first thing we ask ourselves, how many 25s go into 8? Well, clearly in 8, there are no 25s. So we write a 0 there. And then we ask ourselves, how many 25s go into 86? Now, clearly in 86, there are 3 lots of 25, because 25 times 3 is 75. Now, the remainder here... 86 minus 75 is 11. And then what we do, we bring this 5 down here. And then what we do, we ask ourselves, how many 25s go into 115? Well, clearly in 115, there are 4 lots of 25, because 25 times 4 is 100. And the remainder here, 115 minus 100, is clearly 15. Now, you notice that I don't have any digits here to bring down. So what do I do here? Well, remember that in decimal numbers, I can write as many zeros as I want here. It does not change the answer. It does not even change the number. So all I need to do, I need to bring one of these zeros down here. And then I ask myself, how many 25s go into 150? Well, clearly in 150, there are exactly six lots of 25. Because 25 times 6 is 150. And there aren't any remainders, because... 150 minus 150 is 0, so we stop here. 
So what is the final answer to this question? Meaning, where will I place the decimal point? Well, all you need to do is do an estimate to this division. Now, if I estimate this, how can I estimate this? Well, this can be rounded round the, uh, each of the decimal numbers to the nearest integer. Well, 8.65 round rounded to the nearest whole number, the nearest integer, is 9. And 2.5 rounded to the nearest integer is 3. So clearly 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. So clearly this tells me that the answer to this division has to be in the units. So all I need to do, I place the decimal point after the unit here. So the answer here is in the units 3.46. So the answer to this question is 3.46.